So if I would have took off, it's a Mustang. If I would have put it in park and of course I'm going to go straight, I would have went straight into a dead end. So for some reason I couldn't get it in motion. You know, and he saved me. It's the hand of God. Oh, and then yeah. mm-hmm. there's another thing I was going to say. Uh, I was uh, about 13, 14, and uh, I remember raging. Just little things would set me off, and I, I wouldn't, it would be really hard to to stop it. Like, I would start clutching myself and growling, and then I'll calm down, but then there's this little voice inside my head it'll start pumping me up like are you going to let them get away with that they think you're a punk I didn't need nobody else to pump me up or instigate I instigated myself (laughs) am I a punk yeah they just made you you know I would start going and then I would get myself madder and madder and then it's like a light switch and then I start flipping stuff oh no you know I just start going off and my grandma had tried to stop me but by that time you know I had pulled a knife on her you know and I was trying to almost stab my grandma But then I, you know, I'm fighting it from taking over, and I'm like, whoa, you know. And they call the cops already, and I take off running. And uh, I remember it took about five grown men to take me down, which is a a 13-year-old boy. And they, when they finally got me down, like, what did you take? What kind of drugs are you on? I'm not. I'm mad. (laughs) And that, that was it, you know. And it was just, yeah, it was pretty powerful. And then. By the time I was 15, the voices had got so bad, you know, telling me I'm not, I'm, nobody loves me, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm nothing. You know, it would be better if you were gone, but little by little I realized it was the devil, you know, yeah. creeping in and just little voice and just, just getting to me. And then I, I put the belt around my neck and I don't remember much. I just remember uh, being life flighted and my mom found me unconscious with the belt around my throat and, uh. I think by that time it was about the second or third time I had almost ki- tried to kill myself. You know, I have took I've taken over twenty Xanax, which I don't know if you know what that is. Uh, bar pills. I've drank almost a gallon of McCormick's vodka, the thirteen dollar bottle, and took pills. You know, and all, the, every every time they kept saying, "We don't know why he's still here. He he drank enough alcohol to kill a grown man twice his size, or he took enough pills to kill two three people." And, you know, and me, all it was doing was making me cocky, arrogant. You know who I am? You want to play with me? You know, like I, but it was the devil convincing me that it was of my own doing. Oh, you, I'm tough. You know, I'm a bad, but it was God. God, I'm pretty sure he's over there just shaking his head like, how, how long do I have to protect you? How long? Thank God for his amazing grace. Amen. You know, uh, Isaiah, we'll continue, but as we talk to you, we see this behavior in so many of our young people, do we not? Where the enemy has just infilled them with a, a spirit of anger and a spirit of rage. Isaiah said there were times his mother would just have to hold him through those attacks of rage. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, I think if it wasn't for her, she's, she saved plenty of people's lives mm. just from stopping me. Mm. And she would just hug, hug me and, or hold me and put herself in danger, you know, and just, baby, it's me, baby, it's me, baby. Listen to me. It's your mother. And little by little, I was fighting whatever was taking over and just, and then as I'm calming down, it'll, and she, baby, stop. And I would have to, it, it, you know, and there's times she, she couldn't, you know, and she just had to walk away and let me, you know, destroy her whole house, stuff she worked hard for. But little by little, I didn't know, not only was he was attacking me, he was attacking her through me mm-hmm. and attacking my little brother and sister because my little brother and sister saw me overdose a few times. My little brother and sister would hide and get scared because I was going off. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know the effect I was having on the people around me mm-hmm. and destroying their faith little by little or even... They didn't have faith at all, you know, just ripping the seed out. And it, it got, you know, somewhere along that time I had actually came to God. And I think that's why he saved me so many times is because I had accepted him, but then I drifted, drifted far away and backslide, uh, backslid. Because mm-hmm. uh, I actually grew up going to my aunt's every, every weekend 
and my uncle was a pastor. So, you know, my earliest memories were, I remember of church, but it got flooded out with everything else. It got drowned out, you know, and I have to actually sit there hard and think, oh, I remember being in church, you know, when I was little. Oh, I And I think that's like the parable of the sower. There was seed getting sown, but it was getting stone, sown on the rocky ground. So whenever it was sprouting in my heart, the uh, the temptations and you know mm-hmm. the enemy was ripping it out, and I was already I was on so little I really didn't have no, you know we're like kids are like sponges they soak up everything they see and hear That's right. here, That's right. and you know a lot of kids don't have father figures nowadays so what they look up to is the rappers the celebrities Great. Little Wayne you know I, I, oh I want to be like him mm-hmm. you know I, I want to have the money the car the girls. But in the Bible, it says, for what profit is it if you gain the word and lose your soul? Oh, hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah, hallelujah. We can see the Holy Ghost has started making up for lost time in his life. Amen. He's full of the word of God. Isaiah, tell us a little bit. uh, I'm going to regress a little. Your grandfather, I believe it was, that struggled with some of the same thing with anger. Uh, Was it an uncle or a grandfather? My dad. no, Your that dad. was my dad. Your dad. Yeah. The, well, my, my whole family's actually very hot tempered. I mean, it's just, we're, we actually, my great grandparents originated from Spain. So, you know, we're Spanish, we're hot blooded Latin. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's something wrong with Spaniards that, you know, because they, they started bullfighting. I don't know, you ain't in your right mind if you want to jump in there and start playing with the bull. <laughs> True. <laughs> now the time came when you were incarcerated. Yes, Tell ma'am. Us the uh, you know, and actually, now that I sit there and think about it, my mom—I wish she was here, but she couldn't make it. She would testify and say, every time I got in trouble, I got slaps on the hands, slaps on the hands, and got away with it. It was like I was being protected, mm. but I didn't, I didn't, know, I didn't know it was the devil protecting me. He wanted me out here wrecking havoc and destroying people, you know, and hurting people. And when I accepted God is when I actually started getting locked up. And I'm like, (laughs) and I sat there and thought about it. I'm like, you know, now that I came to God, I'm not getting away with what I used to. (laughs) And then I sat there and thought about it. And it's because I was his child now. And just like any other child, you wanted, I got disciplined. Okay, you know, you accepted me. You know my word because I've always knew the Bible like the back of my hand. I, I, I was well read in it. But the thing is, uh, I, I only believed it because that's what I was taught, you know. Well, yeah. I was raised from birth. Hey, you know, this is what we believe in. I'm like, well, and me, I was a very smart kid. I always questioned anything, everything. I said, well, if I grew up in Israel, I would be Muslim. If I grew up over there, I would be Buddhist. You know, I never accepted it. I said, I'm only Christian because this is, I, I grew up in America, a Christian country, you know. But um, it just, it, it became very real for me, you know. And the, I, I started getting convinced that I really was crazy, that I really had mental problems and, you know, but that's what the devil wanted. He wanted to convince, oh, it's all in your mind. There is no God. There is no, you know. But the only thing that kept me actually trying to come back to God was the fear of going to hell. Mm. You know, I was like, what if it is real? Mm. Is, is this something I want to play with? And, you know, I tell people that all the time because I run into more and more atheists nowadays. And it, and they always tell me, you know, it's only one life and then we'll die and that's it. I said, okay. I said, but why not follow the Bible? It don't teach nothing wrong. It teaches you actually to be a better person even if you don't believe in it. Oh, that's good. And I, and I say, uh, that's good. I said, who has more to lose here, you or me? If I am right about it, I guess I get to go to heaven. And if you're right, you know, I just I put that in their mind. And, but that's really why I think I started, okay, I came to God, and, but I still chose to live in my worldly flesh. I mean, my worldly desires, but I got punished harsher. And it's like, you know, like a father. Okay, you got a father now. 